Okay, hi class. This is a pre-love instruction for pancreas. Okay, so we have four slides for today. We have slide number four. This is acute pancreatitis. Slide 85, that's islet cell sclerosis. We have 131 cystic fibrosis and 132 pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Okay, let's start with slide number four. So this is acute pancreatitis. So what do we have for acute pancreatitis? It is the acute inflammation of the pancreas. Uh, it has several uh, causation. One would be the obstruction of the pancreatic duct. This can be associated with presence of gallstones. It can be presence of tumors or the presence of parasites like Ascaris lumbricoides that would be lodged into the pancreatic duct. Other reasons would be toxic exposures. So we can have patients who are alcoholics that can present with, with pancreatitis. And that would be 65% of the cause of acute pancreatitis in our setting. And then we have inherited genetic defects like the presence of uh, mutations towards PRSS1, which is a gain of function. Uh, we have SPINK1, which is a loss of function. And then we have the CFTR, that, that's for cystic fibrosis. Uh, those who are getting these inherited mutations would carry a 40% lifetime risk for acute pancreatitis, uh, for for uh, for CA. So uh, other causes would be vascular injury uh, or infections. So what happens in this case is that there would be the inappropriate release of the enzymes, okay? Because there's an obstruction, uh, it will lead to the destruction of the parenchyma and the adjacent fats okay. okay so in the adjacent fats so grossly if you're going to look at the autopsy cases of patients with pancreatitis we can have the appearance of chalky white color of these fats so that would be associated with fat necrosis and sometimes we would also see the presence of hemorrhage, like this one, like this area. We would see areas of hemorrhage. So in fat necrosis, it is identified with the saponification of the fat cells. There would be this homogeneous pink substance located within its cytoplasm. And uh, that would be the fat necrosis. We would also see this destruction, tissue destruction of the, uh, of the paren uh, pancreatic parenchyma. Sometimes it would be liquefactive because of the presence of the inflammation. Okay? Or it can, so liquefactive would mean that there would be the loss of the outlines. So in this portion, we can see the presence of fibrocellular mass okay so and in some areas it can be coagulative necrosis like this one wherein you have the ghost outlines of the assigner structures but there is loss of the nucleus so this can be an acute necrotizing pancreatitis okay so what are the clinical features that we would see in these patients so these patients can present with abdominal pain, which is uh, one of the primary reasons they would go to the hospital. And uh, in some cases, there, there would be acute abdomen, board-like rigidity. Uh, in a few cases or some cases, there would be what we call as a systemic inflammatory response syndrome, wherein it will result to leukocytosis, uh, presence of DIC or disseminated intravascular dis, uh, co uh, coagulation 
NARDS, and this is due to the release of those toxic enzymes into the circulation. Next slide, we have islet sclerosis. Okay. So, this is, uh, this is more or less the most normal among the slides that we have. So, you can appreciate for the presence of the normal-looking pancreatic sinai, which would comprise the exocrine pancreas. And then we also have the islet of Langerhans. What we are going to look for would be uh, islets of Langerhans that would show fibrosis, uh, like this one. Okay. So this is the one that we have to look for, this portion. So histologic, okay, so higher power of magnification. Okay. So these are the assigner structures very important to remember this one because when you go into the uh, adenocarcinoma we will be able to differentiate which is normal and abnormal so this is the islet of, of Langerhans with associated fibrosis although it's difficult to differentiate it from amyloidosis in this case so fibrosis can be due to the presence of inflammation like what happens in in type 1 diabetes mellitus, wherein there's beta cell destruction, there's insulitis. Or in the case of uh, beta in type 2, there would be amyloid deposition. Okay, so the way to differentiate these two would be through concurrent stain. Okay. And then we have slide 131. This is cystic fibrosis. So cystic fibrosis is a genetic defect that would be brought about by a CFTR uh, abnormality, which is the cystic fibrosis conductance receptor uh, transmembrane conductance receptor gene. <clears throat> so this is the most uh, common inherited genetic disease among Caucasians and uh, the involved channels, the gated channels would be the ENAC or the epithelial sodium channel which can have vary, varying manifestations like in the skin uh, there would be a, a decreased reabsorption of sodium chloride resulting to what we call as the salty sweat and in the lung and in the GI tract, like here in the pancreas, it will result to a decrease in the absorption of, a decrease in the secretion of sodium chloride, as well as an, a decrease in the, an increase in the absorption of water. So again, in the lung and in the GI tract, there will be a an increase in water reabsorption and there would be a decrease in the secretion of sodium chloride. So what we have here would be uh, the presence of hyperconcentrated viscid secretions. So in the pancreas, there would be atrophy of the assigner structures. Notice that the uh, islets of Langerhans are very distinct okay, because of the fibrosis and the lack of the assigner structures surrounding them. Then we have dilated ducts that are filled with the mucus or the secretions which are very viscid, hyperconcentrated. Okay. The manifestations are for patients, sorry for those dogs. Okay, the the manifestations for these patients would be diarrhea, there would be fat malabsorption, there would be pancreatitis. Okay? And our last slide would be slide 132. This is adenocarcinoma of the pancreas. Okay? So, the adenocarcinoma or the malignancy of the pancreas is believed to 
arise from the pancreatic intraepithelial neoplasia or the PAN-IN. And as what I've said a while ago, it's very important that you know the assigner structures that would be located uh, adjacent to the islets of Langerhans. Okay? So uh, there are several mutations that are associated with this condition. We have uh, the KRAS, which is seen in 90 to 95%. And remember, this is an oncogene. The others would be tumor suppressor gene. We have the CDKN2A, which occurs in 95% of cases. SMAD4 mutation. And then we have the P53. So the only type of mutation that is oncogenic would be the KRAS. There's also telomere shortening. And with regards to the location, 60% would be coming from the head of the pancreas. 20% would be com coming from uh, the entire pancreas that's diffuse. And 15% from the body and 5% from the tail. So majority of cases would be the diffuse type, uh, would be the ductal adenocarcinoma. Okay, so if you remember, okay, in the other slide, this would be the islet of Langerhans. And then surrounding it should be the presence of assigner structures. However, we would see the presence of glands. See? We see the presence of glands. So this is an, these are part already of the malignancy. Okay, let's look at the other areas. So, you would see the presence of glands. Okay? So, these are not ducts. These are glands. So, the glands would have uh, pleomorphism. Okay? You would see dark chromatin pattern. Okay? These are columnar. Here, you would see the columnar appearance. So, this would be the glands that would be associated with adenocarcinoma. Okay. okay, so I'll just look at the other areas so that you would be able to identify them when we have an exam. Okay, so other areas, you would see the signet ring appearance, like this one. Okay, abundant mucin in the cytoplasm, you would see the presence of the nuclei, okay? So, signet ring pattern can be seen in the pancreatic adenocarcinoma slide, okay? So, not only in the GI. Okay, so... Okay, so that ends our session for today. I won't be able to show my face because I have long hair already. Okay, so stay safe and good night.